Hi everybody, it's Dan Droff with your news cartridge for Wednesday, March 7th, 2018. Welcome to Wednesday. Just a reminder, my break is coming up between March 19th and the 23rd, and if you want to skip around in today's episode, timestamps and reference links are both down below. Today we begin with an issue that has affected literally every owner of an Oculus Rift. In the wee hours of the morning, a security certificate for the Oculus Rift runtime environment expired, leaving everyone unable to use their headset. As of the writing and filming of this episode, Oculus is very aware of the problem and are looking into a solution. As a temporary fix, they have suggested to turn your clocks back to a date before March 7th when the certificate expired and it should allow you to play. Personally, I think having a security certificate that just checks the date needs to be improved just a little bit, but that's just me. Realistically, Oculus should be aware of these things and not allow them to happen in the first place, but this is the world we live in. Let me know if you're still having trouble with your Oculus Rift in the comments down below. On to release announcements with a rumor Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is coming to Xbox One after its version popped up on a Taiwanese ratings board. Then Northgard, the game that's pretty much Vikings meets Civilization, has left early access and is celebrating with a 25% off discount. Moving on from there, it appears Nintendo is set to have a larger market share than Microsoft this year. Sony is still dominating the console market, but because of the Switch, Nintendo is back on track and Microsoft's lead has been steadily declining. And truth be told, I'm rooting for Microsoft because they're the ones pushing for cross-platform play. I really like the Xbox Game Pass program, and I think it has a lot of value to offer for customers, and they currently have the most powerful hardware for consoles. Up next, Ubisoft is celebrating today because Rainbow Six Siege has hit its highest concurrent player count with over 17600,000, thanks to the new Outbreak mode. I haven't actually tried this mode out for myself yet, but with so many people coming back to play it, I guess I have to see what all the fuss is about. Then we have God of War, and it's stories like this that always get to me. The director has come forward to say that microtransactions will not be included, and to quote him more specifically, no freaking way, three exclamation marks. It is refreshing to have a developer be that excited about not having microtransactions, but I really just can't wait for that to be the norm again. Moving on to another part of the AAA industry I don't understand anymore, Final Fantasy XV was pirated before it even launched. Remember, I do not advocate piracy in any way. My point is to highlight how pointless it is for developers to spend money on these things. And you could have guessed it, they're using our good old friend Denuvo. Looking into it further though, Denuvo Nouveau isn't the only thing to blame here, as Square Enix uploaded the file to run the full version of the game with the demo. Meaning, they did the work for the pirates and the game remains uncracked. You don't have to break into a house that the owner gives you a key to. From there, we go to NVIDIA releasing their GeForce Now program, a remote rendering service for your own games. This will essentially allow you to play games on any computer at the highest settings, even laptops without dedicated graphics cards. The service is rather expensive in my opinion, but it could be good for casual gamers who don't want to spend a lot of money up front on an expensive machine that they'll eventually have to upgrade. Let me know if you think this service has any value in the comments down below and check the description for pricing information. Finally for today, Four's new idols in Skyrim SE, better known as FNIS, pushed an update a few days ago in protest of Mod Drop. You may remember the last time we talked about the mod piracy site Mod Drop when Eleonora removed all of her mods from Nexus in protest of the site. This protest is much different. Four, the maker of FNIS, added a way for his mod to detect if Mod Drop is installed on your computer. It's innocent enough as it it doesn't report back to 4 at all, but good luck playing anything though, as it renders FNIS completely useless and displays a message telling you to uninstall Mod Drop. Considering multiple animation mods depend on FNIS, it renders those useless as well. Your only options are to get rid of FNIS and any mods that depend on it, use an earlier version, or completely uninstall Mod Drop. This only affects the special edition version of FNIS. Now to be fair, Mod Drop doesn't have the best reputation, as all of the mods it steals from Nexus are free anyway. And as shitty as that makes Mod Drop, 4's behavior in handling this is rather concerning. He's put into his mod a way to block his own mod from working if it detects something he has a problem with. And what's to say if he gets into a tiff with another modder and then stops all of his mods working alongside of theirs? This is not okay and is going to lead to more bad behavior in the future. People should feel free to make their own decisions rather than be forced into it because of something else they like. Do you want more choices? How about tomorrow's game releases? For PC, Warhammer Vermintide 2. 
Dive, Graveyard Birds, Breathe, Wild Glory, Keep in Mind, Remastered, Chesaria, The Tactical Adventure, Superland, Silenced, The House, My Lovely Daughter, Earthlock, Failed State, and Tardy. For PlayStation 4, 3D Mini Golf, Audio Beats, and ACA Neo Geo, Real Bout Fatal Fury 2. For Nintendo Switch, World Conqueror X, Bleed 2, iZombie, Midnight Deluxe, Steriden, Binary Stars, ACA Neo Geo, Real Bout Fatal Fury 2, Bit Dungeon Plus, The Trail Frontier Challenge, Men of Yoshiwara, Ogia, and Earthlock. For Nintendo 3DS, Brick Through, and for PlayStation Vita, Root Double, Before Crime, After Days, Extend Edition. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And why did Seven eat nine? Because he needed three squared meals a day. Only squares didn't like that joke. Click out here to watch the bonus episode for today's show. Click down here to watch yesterday's episode, which was about Hunt Down the Freeman's real game patch coming on Monday, which has not come and continues to have not come. And click over here to subscribe to my wonderful, wonderful channel. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye.